Dr. Baliga here. This podcast belongs to a group of 10 podcasts on statistics in medicine. These podcasts should give you a solid foundation on this topic. It's derived from an outstanding chapter titled Statistics in Medicine in Baliga's textbook of internal medicine, available at www.mastermedfacts.com. The chapter is authored by Dr. Donna Windish, MD, Associate Professor at Yale University School of Medicine. She is the Associate Program Program Director for the Yale Primary Care Internal Medicine Residency Program. Dr. Windish completed her medical school degree at the University of Connecticut and her internship and residency in New York at the University of Rochester. She went on to do fellowship in general internal medicine at Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and obtained her MPH at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Dr. Windish has been on faculty at Yale since her fellowship. She is clinically active in both inpatient and outpatient medicine, oversees the research and residency program for the Yale Primary Care Training Program, and teaches medical students and residents biostatistics and how to read medical literature. Multiple choice question. Researchers want to assess the mean change in the American Urological Association Symptom Index score rated on a scale of 0 to 35, comparing saw palmetto versus placebo. Which of the following differences in scores would yield a statistically significant change? A. Minus 1.68, 95% confidence interval, minus 2.37 to 0.01. B. Minus 1.90, 95% confidence interval, minus 2.49 to minus 0.37. C. Minus 1.45, 95% confidence interval, minus 2.56 to 1.5 and D, 0.5, 95% confidence interval, minus 0.29 to 0.90. And the answer is B, minus 1.90, 95% confidence interval, minus 2.49 to 0.37. Since the question is assessing a change or difference in score, any confidence interval that contains a value 0 would not be considered statistically significant. This leaves the answer B as the only statistically significant result. Confidence intervals are computed from sample data with a specific probability that contains the unknown true or target population value within the interval. In other words, data from the sample population are used to make an inference about the likelihood of an outcome in the target population. A 95% confidence interval means that one can state with 95% certainty that the true number or the outcome lies within the range given by the confidence interval. Key point, when looking at a result with a confidence interval, the reader must determine what type of analysis was done Specifically, was the test looking for a difference in outcomes or a risk of an event? When the difference between outcomes is assessed, any confidence interval that contains a value 0 would not be considered a statistically significant result. In the case of a ratio such as relative risk, uh, uh, hazards ratio or odds ratio, any confidence interval that contains the value of 1 would not be considered statistically significant. P-values and confidence intervals. P-values give the reader a sense of how likely an observation is to be due to chance, but they can be abused by researchers who make multiple comparisons without adjusting the standard for significance. Confidence intervals offer more information. Technically, a 95% confidence interval tells the reader 
that if the same if the same study was done 100 times with subjects from the same population pool 95 of the 100 confidence intervals would contain the true relative risk or whatever was being estimated in the study confidence intervals are thus valuable indicators of precision of an estimate and the likely values of a measure such as the relative risk of disease within the population. A 95% confidence interval of 3.2 to 6.5 for a relative risk clearly defines an increased risk. A 95% confidence interval extending from 0.9 to 6.5 suggests a positive e effect but it is still within the realm of a chance finding because the p-value is greater than 0.05. Certainly, a confidence interval extending from 0.2 to 11.6 is merely an impre imprecise estimate. Yet, such a confidence interval is sometimes used as evidence for high relative risk because the lower limit of an imprecise estimate can only approach zero whereas the upper limit can increase without bounds. This podcast on statistics in general internal medicine is derived from an outstanding chapter on this topic in Baliga's textbook on internal medicine available at www.mastermedfacts.com. It's authored by Dr. Donna Windish, Associate Professor in Internal Medicine at Yale University School of Medicine.